diet impact on climate. This is pretty simple. I, I think everybody here knows this part. Um, reducing meat will help climate change. It'll reduce global warming. Th that really is not controversial. It's controversial whether it'll happen or not, but the, the key is not controversial. But it has to be part of the climate solution, and it's not, because uh, the powers that be are saying that it's demand-driven, and so they don't advocate against uh, meat consumption, but that meat is a contributor to greenhouse gases, that is not controversial. And more than all transportation combined, again, most of you already know that. And just bringing that home again. So people will mess with these numbers, but this is coming from the 2006 Livestock Long Shadow Report put out by the UN. This was at 18 uh, percent. Transportation was 13 percent, so that's about 40 percent, 30, 40 percent difference. If you hear numbers uh, like that, that's where they're getting those numbers from. The UN then downsized their number to 14 and a half percent. If you hear people using that number, the UN got very upset that the vegans were taking their work and advocating reduced meat consumption because despite them bringing out all these dire consequences of global meat consumption, and they're the ones who said meat, the livestock industry is greater than all transportation combined. Those were their words. Uh, they still didn't realize we were gonna use it as a rallying cry and use their research uh, to, to promote reduced meat consumption. So what we're gonna focus on is deforestation and methane. There's lots of reasons of uh, meat's impact on, on greenhouse gases, but I'm just gonna quickly focus on deforestation and methane. And deforestation happens from land use changes. And this is one of the interesting things, again, when you're, t you're reading this research, you're like, land use change? Well, that doesn't sound so bad. <laughs> but we're talking about deforestation, desertification, overgrazing, and so we've lost 70% of the Amazon to deforestation, and much of that is due to livestock grazing. So they're, they're cutting down trees so that the, the cows can graze. So there's your grass-fed beef right there, taking out the rainforest. And then also for feed crops. So that's what the second one is. This is the, the second one underneath is soy monoculture. So if you don't like monocultures, you should be kicking the meat habit because monocultures are really being driven by our, our meat addiction. So that's what the rainforest looks like on that side. That's the monoculture on the other side. And as I've mentioned previously, and then other people have also mentioned, we need to be reforesting, not deforesting. If we're, we, have to, we have to work on this climate issue. I should have started with that. Anyway, we must reforest. This, the photosynthesis is what we have, it's lungs. You gotta think of this is what's bringing oxygen into our world, this is what's fighting greenhouse gases. We really have to stop deforesting and if you cut your meat consumption, and it's not just beef, but especially cows for climate, but I'll get into a little bit more on that, um, we have to take care of this and then we need to use those forest for other things, we need to be reforesting so we get some more photosynthesis. And that's really all I'm gonna do on deforestation unless I say it again, because I get excited. The other thing we're gonna focus on is methane. It, it does get a lot of attention. I think it needs to get more attention. And this is a little bit of science, so I'm gonna say it slowly, because I don't think a lot of people understand this particular aspect about why methane is important to focus on. Methane cuts work fast. So in case that's hard to read the way I phrased it, Cuts in methane work fast in getting rid of greenhouse gases. So methane cuts work fast. Methane has a much shorter half-life than carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide has about a 100-year half-life. So in 100 years, we still have half the amount of carbon in carbon dioxide. In eight years, methane's amounts are cut. So if we want to act fast on reducing our greenhouse gases, and we do, want to work fast, work very fast. If we get our methane emissions down, that's gonna make the most immediate difference. So that's one of the reasons methane is really important is because the cut in methane is gonna reduce the warming at a much quicker rate. Also, methane is much more potent. It's a much more powerful greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide. So this, uh, this graphic here, this isn't my graphic, but I liked it a lot. It says methane traps up to 100 times more heat in the atmosphere than carbon dioxide within a five-year period and 72 times more in a 20-year period. For those of you who work on these issues, a lot of times what you hear is methane is somewhere between 20 and 25 times 
more powerful of a greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide. And to, to bring those numbers home a little bit, if I just said, wow, methane's twice as powerful, it's twice as strong as a greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide, wow, twice as much. That's, that's impressive. Like, I, I get twice as much. Ten times as much, it's, it's even harder to start getting like what, what ten times more powerful means. When you start talking about 70 times more powerful, 100 times more powerful, that is immense. So when we're talking in the short term, methane is up to 100 times more powerful if we're looking at, at five-year time span. So, but you might be thinking to yourself, but there's so much more carbon dioxide. Why are we going to focus on methane? Carbon dioxide is the problem. More than half the world's greenhouse gases are carbon dioxide, not methane. And so you see the chart here has got more than half from fossil fuel use. And then I don't know why they, uh, they did it quite the way they did, but then we've got another 3% from miscellaneous uses and then another 17% from deforestation, which we were just talking about. So um, that's also a carbon dioxide issue. Uh, and then methane is only 14%. So we have five times, about five times more carbon dioxide molecules in the atmosphere than methane, but methane is in the short term by 100 times more powerful. Over a 20-year period, it's, they said 72, but it's actually up to 84 now, is the new Intergovernmental uh, Panel on Climate Change. The IPCC now says 84 times more powerful over 22 years. So even though there's only 20% as much methane, it's 100 times more powerful or 84 times more powerful, whichever number you want, it's a lot more powerful. So that's why we gotta, we gotta care about that. Now, not all that methane is from livestock, um, but a lot of that carbon dioxide is from livestock because it's so energy intensive. You've got the transportation, you've got the slaughter processes and things of that nature. Also, most of that nitrous oxide is from livestock and nitrous oxide is 300 times more powerful than carbon dioxide. And so this is just one more chart, one more chart, I promise. Um, this is a breakdown of the, the methane sources. So the um, fermentation that you hear, see here, that's, that's from the animals. Oh, man! <laughs> that's, that's what we're looking at right here. And then also manure management. So uh, that's, that's the gas. So, and it's mostly from their mouth, despite what jokes like people like to make. So this is, I, I was excited when I, I first found this. This is from the Environmental Defense Fund. They got their number right, 84 times more powerful. This is over the 20 years. That's the newest figure. They really get it. They've got this big banner. Then they've got this, uh, this you know, protest out there with the, the big banner there too, and all these people talking about climate action now. But if you look on their website, it's all about electricity. They don't mention diet change. Come on. Powers that be. <laughs> oh. All right. I had a really great slide, but I don't think it's going to happen. All right. Sorry. I had a great slide. We have a great banner, and we make the point really clear. There we go. This is what the animal ag business wants you to think about. This precious little bean here, rainbows, green grass, everybody looks happy. Okay, I, was, I'm, I might have to go manual if this clicker doesn't work. Grass fed. So I just want to make the point really clear here that Grass-fed is being promoted as the eco-friendly way to be able to have your meat and eat it too, and it is not. From a climate perspective, it is worse than factory farm meat. And so I'm really skittish to say that because I don't want to promote factory farming. From an animal perspective, it's much better to be grass-fed than to be confined. So for the cow's sake, I would rather them be grass-fed. I would rather them be grass-fed and then never slaughtered for meat, but this is better for the animals, but from a climate perspective, the amount of methane that they will emit is three to four times higher than if they're factory farmed. If they're being fed corn and soy and grains that are not their natural food, 
then their methane emissions are less. If they're eating their natural foods of, of grass, uh, they emit much more methane just naturally. So that's why grass-fed is not eco-friendly. Also, I'm sorry, vegetarians, cheese, number three greenhouse gas emitter. And that's because, again, you have cows who are creating dairy. They have much longer life processes, so their, their lifespan is longer. They're around a longer amount of time emitting greenhouse gases. There's more processes involved, so a lot more electricity being generated to create dairy. And then cheese in particular is concentrated dairy. So every bite of cheese is greenhouse gas climate destruction. And then, again, just want to make the, the warning, I am not promoting factory farms, but other people are. Other people are using the climate issue to promote factory farming. They're using food security to promote factory farming instead of promoting plant-based diets uh, for food security. And the reason why they're doing that is they're saying there's less land involved, there's fewer emissions, factory farming's more efficient, but they're not talking about the energy-intensive nature of factory farms. And when we were looking at those massive amounts of crops being used and cycled through animals, that's for factory farm. And factory farm is about 98, 99% of the U.S. meat is from factory farms. And then globally, that is um, increasingly the method being used to meet global meat demand. Also, just a point of interest for people who are, a little, again, a little, little more advanced on this, if you're working on these issues, this is a really interesting point, is that once you're dealing with factory farmed animals, that the amount of greenhouse gas emissions is pretty much the same. It's basically the same by weight. And that's because your greenhouse gas emissions are then more about the fossil fuels being used and the electricity being used and the water and things of that nature. It's less about methane emissions. So once you are dealing with factory farming, then switching from cows to chickens and things of that nature do doesn't matter from a climate perspective. It's much more about weight. I mean, it's by weight, so they're, they're about the same. And then just really briefly, a, a lot of you know about the, the 2009 rebuttal to uh, the UN's 2006 Livestock Long Shadow Report. This is from World Watch Magazine, Robert Goodland and Jeff Onhang. They take their numbers, they use their own numbers, the UN's own numbers, and they, they basically just look closely at them and rework them and say, here's what was miscounted, here was what was left out, here's, here's these problems. And so just to keep it simple, one of the things is the focus on change. And I'll talk a little bit more about that a little bit later, but when you focus on change, you're not focusing about all the harm already being done. So if you talk about the change in deforestation, you're not talking about all the deforestation that's happened already, you're just talking about the change, which is much smaller a lot of times than the deforestation already in place. It emits, uh, omits major aspects of deforestation, so they account Amazon deforestation, but they leave out Argentina. How do you leave out Argentina? Uh, they use numbers that are more conservative than their, their own numbers, which I don't have listed here, but that's true. Uh, they also um, omit all the aquatic animals. They don't count aquatic animals at all. And then again, they use a 100-year time frame. And that's been standard for a while. This, this focus now on shifting to a 20-year time frame is relatively new, and it's good news. But those figures at 18% are using the 100-year time frame. So you can see by those numbers with the methane, where I talked about now it's 84 times more powerful over a 20-year time frame. Those, that's how you're getting these big jumps in numbers. They also include respiration, which is a little controversial. If you, if you know some of the science, uh, there's an idea that respiration is just part of the natural cycle, but it's not part of the natural cycle when you have 70 billion animals. It might be part of a natural cycle when you have a few animals in proportion to the land, but when you're talking about these massive concentration of animals on these small amounts of land, the respiration matters, and that's, that's higher science, so I don't know who understands that, but I'm just put point putting it out there. And here, again, are the quick takeaway points. So I know I'm covering a lot, um, but livestock are a top greenhouse gas emitter, uh, more than all transportation combined, but again, whether it's 18% or 14% or 51%, it's a lot, and it's something we can do. It doesn't compete with other efforts, so it's something that we can do as individuals and we can advocate for, and um, so I would say it's the top, but even if you don't believe it's the top, it's at least a top. Uh, vegan is the best way to go. Oh, all right. Let's keep going. 
Vegan. Vegan is the best way to go as an individual action and as advocacy. It's the best thing I've ever done personally. I'm so excited to be able to work on these issues. That includes eggs and dairy and grass-fed or problems too. As I mentioned, if you care about the animal issue, if you're vegetarian and you're vegetarian for animals, then really look at dairy and eggs. They are worse. They are worse than eating the animals directly. If you're thinking about cutting back and you're not vegetarian or vegan, I'll be controversial. Start there. Let go of dairy and eggs first. Eat your cow. Even though cows are going to emit the climate change and wipe us all out, but it's up to you. And then, it, again, it doesn't compete with other efforts. So we do debate sometimes, oh, what's worse, transportation or, or livestock industry? But it doesn't, it doesn't really matter except just to, as a debate on where to focus energy. But um, at an individual level, it doesn't compete. You, you can do both. You can work on both.